Hide Hide your kids. kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous Dangerous podcast. podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right Right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, rash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh, yeah. Just two guys who love a rainy night. It's such a beautiful sight. Hey, kids, you're listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Hey, rabbit. I'm your co-host, Joel <laughs> Gollum Cheeseman. And I'm Chad. I was overserved. So wash. And on this week's episode, Chad and Cheese are unleashed, upward Woo. crash crushes, and who's ready for naked cruises? No. Let's do this. <laughs> Rabbit, that's right. I love I went a way rainy back. night. I love a rainy night. <laughs> One hit wonders from the early <laughs> '80s are always. Yeah, two, didn't he? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, anyway, back. So in much the day. success for Eddie Rabbit. It's been a long <laughs> week, hasn't it? It has been a very, Woo. very long week, especially for you. I mean, you were at the Kentucky Derby that weekend. Was a full weekend. You were suited up. You were dudded up. I mean, I went, over, I went looked, over the I went over the top. Didn't awesome. I? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, it's, both it looked was, awesome. It was the 150th running mm-hmm. of the Derby. Yeah, uh, it's the oldest still running sports event in the United States. Wow. Uh, so we thought we should do it and do it right. Yeah. Uh, the first day is the Oaks. It's all the female horses. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, it's for females. I think breast cancer awareness. So everyone oh, wears sweet. pink suits. Yeah. Uh, so I was in a pink suit yeah. with little horses on it. And then I brought the good. powder blue you look suit uh, on the next day. Lots yeah. of cigars. Yeah. Lots of mint juleps. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then a, a small reprieve and then come to Vegas. So no <laughs> no rest for the wicked. You, on the other hand, had a very restful uh, stint it, it in was. Santa Fe. Yeah. Tell me about Lucky that. Lucky enough, we, uh, Julie and I have never been to Santa Fe before, but we've heard amazing things. We have a friend that our friends that actually live there, um, and so they, they said, come down. So we thought, well, hell, the week before in Leash, we're on our way that way anyway. Uh, in Santa Fe, people... It's fucking amazing. The yeah. food there is amazing. I went to have some big nose cake cocktails downtown in downtown Santa Fe by the rail yard. Yep. Uh, we went to Bandelier. We did some hiking. Um, and the 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 indigenous people, I think, is with Indians, indigenous people, the natives. Yes, they yeah. they had the pueblo, like the the the, the canyon there in uh, Bandelier, and they had the um, the old style like ladders that you would climb up okay. to go up the mountain and julie was scared shitless yeah and she went up all the way came down all the way i mean it was it was it was so pretty is this fun. where the natives lived in like yeah. caves within the mountain yep yeah, yeah uh when so i lived cool. in arizona there was a tribe that did something similar i don't know yeah. which one it was but yeah it was, it was very cool how and it's it's the way that it has remained uh-huh. after all these years oh yeah um, is really incredible for sure yeah so, yeah yeah, yeah. Two opposing weekends, uh, but we're brought together here in Vegas. Uh, we got a lot to cover and, and a lot of uh, people to visit here at the show. Let's get to shout outs. Okay. You got one that's uh, pretty juicy. Yeah. I mean, right out of the gate, we found out this morning that our friend, Al Smith, the, the ISIM CTO, is retiring, right? And this is, this to me, first and foremost, I mean, Al deserves. Some cocktails and a beach. Okay, sure. the guy's been in the a industry. A foot rub for, and a Perrier. Yeah, yeah forever, <laughs> man. What what an what an amazing dude. And if you've ever listened to episodes with Al Smith, you know he's incredibly smart and just damn personal. He automatically dumbs down the complexity, unlike most C- CTOs. So he's just kind of like that common dude who just has a big brain. And we're gonna miss him. Yep. Although, although, I reached out because uh, you know we've shared some drinks before. I said, hey, look, now you're out from under the you know umbrella of isims let's do that again and let's talk about tech and let's talk about inside and outside of the industry because he's such a smart dude so hopefully we'll have some bourbon and a cigar 
and have a fun yeah. tech chat with uh, with Al Smith. Yeah, Al is a super fan, uh, if you Al. will. Uh, I think he may have worn a Chad and Cheese t-shirt on stage <laughs> at an iSims <laughs> event at some point. He will remain in an advisory role yeah. uh, during the transition, but by all accounts, he will be retiring, but, as we all hope to do at some point. Yes, but the new CTO is Joseph Benjamin. He yep. was a senior software engineer for IBM. Listen. Back in the mid 1990s yep. to the late 1990s, right? His first gig as a CTO was in 2001. Yeah, kids, do the math. Over 20 years ago with Net Identity, and was Group VP and CTO at Oracle from 2017 yep. to 2021. And he just le le uh, left uh, Behavox, which is a, a, an enterprise platform that unifies all types of data into single data lakes, allowing users to query the data, applying, listen, I bet you've never heard this before, machine learning and AI. Yeah, does that, does that tell you anything? That's a new one. Does that tell you anything? Yeah. So, um, th I mean, this to me, I, I think it was pretty awesome. Al, incredibly smart, amazing dude. Yep. And it sounds like Joseph, uh, hopefully he likes bourbon as well. So maybe all four of us can 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 have a have a chat. There will be another iSims event oh, there will in be. the future. Oh, yes. uh, also, have to mention Eric Connors is uh -huh. the uh, ch new chief product officer there Good at, call. Good at call. iSims. Uh, he had previously worked at Ice Mortgage. Excuse me? Ice Mortgage. Excuse me? I know, right? <laughs> uh, but they're not the only company, Chad, this week that announced a new CEO. Yes, yes. Can I, can I interest you in a shot of Vonk oh, in your, in your uh, I need Vegas a, I morning? I need a shot to make sure I don't get the Vonk. That's right. So yes. Ritu Mahanka, yes. hopefully I said that correctly, she is the new CEO of Holland-based Vonk. The company says she's a seasoned HR tech veteran yep. with executive roles at IBM and LinkedIn. Yeah. So Vonk, yeah. we had wondered who would replace or who would come in uh, after Arno. Yep. We have our answer. We have our answer. The thing that I thought was interesting is that Ritu has amazing industry experience, right? She, she was at Brass Ring. It was acquired by IBM, that she was in leadership at IBM. LinkedIn, uh, she was actually spent a little time with our friends over at Cindio. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, re really great, great experience and an impressive career. There's one tell here, though. Tell me. Every single part of that journey was focused in EMEA. Yep. Um, not, not the United States. Yep. EMEA. So the, the big question is, and, and we've kept hearing from Vonk that they're still alive and kicking in the U.S. But this to me isn't proof of that. I, she is incredible. You can see that she's incredibly impressive and competent, but yep. that is her, her expertise is EMEA, right? It's not the United States. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do to move if they do anything in the U.S. or just continues to atrophy like it has yep. over the past, you know, Six months to a year. Yep. And I'll add that uh, having another female CEO I in the industry that. is a great thing. Fucking we spoke to uh, Rebecca, Rebecca Carr, Carr oh. uh, at Smart Recruiters. So impressive women in yes. our space yeah. is always a good thing. Almost as good as well, free stuff. Uh, yes, Chad. but real quick, I want to shout out to Smart Recruiters. Take that interim off her and let her swing that bat, right? She's the interim CEO right now. She has a great history with, with um, Smart Recruiters. She left came back yep um i i really i want to see another female ceo but we talked to her yesterday and i was blown away at just not just not how smart she was yep. but how much history that she came out with so she was talking about what branch be, out be known <laughs> branch out you know <laughs> I'm like holy shit so anyway she knows the space anyway and yes. loves it too oh yeah which is, which it, which is, is exactly what we need and we've been talking about right so make her the ceo guy you're saying it. that not as a smart recruiter shareholder no, just as a spectator, no, just as, okay, a, just as a guy just sitting back and, and, and watching this 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 thing, you know, look like it's on a crash course. Yep. Right. It needs leadership. And I mean, hell, I mean, somebody who loves the industry that much has been, you know, in product. I mean, pretty much in biz dev in some cases. Um, I mean, she to me, she she sounds like the, 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 perf the perfect person. Plus, she has ties to Jerome, too. 
We don't know if she loves free booze I and T-shirts. I bet she does. I bet she but does. she probably does, I bet Chad. she does. Tell us about that. So T-shirts from Aaron App. We've got the new Guns N' Roses design, Chad and G's Guns N' Roses design. Uh, Aaron App on the back. They actually did this uh, this design just for it's the T-shirt. It's an original. Just for the T-shirt. It's an original. Beer. Your kids may want to wear it. It's uh, so original. Well, they will. Yeah, and it's so silky smooth. <laughs> yes. It's soft. Oh, yeah. yes, it is. Uh, beer by Aspen Tech Labs. That's right, kids. One winner a, uh, a month will actually win craft beer delivered to their front door from Aspen Tech Labs and Chad and Cheese. Whiskey by Text Colonel. Chad and Cheese send whiskey to one lucky listener a month and if it's your birthday, <laughs> you will get a chance to win possibly rum, some high dollar rum from Plum. But you got to go to chadcheese.com slash free and register. And in case I didn't mention, yes. Chad, we are recording live from the Daxter booth we are. here in Las Vegas. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see. And speaking of Plum, we will uh, pass on birthdays this week okay. because we are recording live. We will well, because they overserved me those, last night, and we can't the, do it anyway. <laughs> on those <laughs> last week. Uh, so speaking of live episodes, yes. we're going to be live in a couple weeks out of Scotland. Scotland. Tell us about that. So, yeah, Scotland for true Glasgow and true Edinburgh. Uh, do you know who is, is joining us in Scotland? Uh, Matt Alder. Yep. Daxtra. Love it. Yeah, we've got we've got so many great uh, companies. PayPal, Lloyds of London, Diageo, ENG, ENY, AMS, Brooks Automation, the Scottish government. Yes, the government's going to be there. They heard we Run, were coming. Run, Stephen. Run, they, Stephen. They heard that we were coming, so they had to be there. But sponsors, Daxtra, you see them here, uh, Ashby, Solutions Driven, Gigged.ai, Willow, and Poetry. Just go to True, that's T-R-U, Scotland.com. Register if register for both of them, yep. either in Glasgow, Edinburgh, or doing both. Yeah, if you're in Scotland, please come oh, out and see come us. On, come on, say hi. Come, come have, have a whiskey, a, a nice peaty dram of scotch uh, with Chad because he he loves it so much. <laughs> oh, but God. if you're not going to be in Scotland, <laughs> don't scotch. worry, we'll be publishing all the episodes from our thoughtful conversations with Scots. Yeah, except except for all of those that we're going to have behind closed doors during the true events because what happens at true stays at true kids also in vegas that's what i've heard anyway but what doesn't stay yes on the chat and cheese podcast does data goes out everywhere okay yes, actually not. it's does. only on youtube guys we just recorded uh the monthly jobs report highlights lowlights uh pr predictions for next month with our friend toby dayton ceo at link up oh, if you haven't checked that out go to youtube.com slash at chad cheese it's about 20 minutes you'll be smarter i <laughs> promise <laughs> topics it's topics time here it is topics baby Topics. It's topics time. Here it is. Topics, baby. All right. Uh, layoffs. Layoffs. Good God. Big G. Layoffs. Google has laid off 200 folks from key teams like Flutter, Dart, and Python yeah. before its I.O. developer conference, citing reorganization for efficiency. There it is again, Chad, the year of efficiency, and aligning resources with priorities. The layoffs were part of, quote, unquote, normal business with affected employees able to apply for other roles. Any concern here about Big G and the layoffs, Chad? Yeah, I mean, it's only 200. I mean, Google is a very, yeah. very large fucking company. So 200, not that big of a deal. But here's what I got to say. A Google spokesperson confirmed the cuts and said, quote, the impacted workers will be able to apply for other open roles Lucky at the company, them. end quote, right? So thanks for working here. There's the door. Appreciate it. And feel free to apply for jobs just like every other schmuck out there. Yeah. I mean, that does not feel like a red carpet experience by any means, right? But again, just 200. Yep. Um, then think about, they were talking about uh, the efficiency side. So if Google is looking to drive efficiency and cut costs, you place an already employed Google worker inside the company. It's faster, it's cheaper uh, than trying to find somebody from the outside. Unless, unless this is a signal that we're getting ready to see more offshoring from Google. I'm not sure we will see, but they have leadership positions yep. being offshored. Yep. Let's see what happens. It's interesting. You know, Google uh, is really good at uh, killing, euthanizing mm -hmm. projects that yeah. aren't working. Yeah. Uh, we've seen it in our own space a few times. Yeah. Uh, they're really good about just killing stuff that doesn't work. So to me, that what, what really stood out to me was 
teams from Flutter, Dart, and Python yeah. were laid off. So for whatever reason, I don't know those companies very well, if at all, but I got to think that Google said, these projects aren't working. We need to reshuffle employees, lay off ones that don't work anymore. Yeah. And this was probably more of just business as usual at Google, focusing on the things that they need to do. Look, AI is an all hands on deck oh, situation at Google. Yeah. Uh, they've been a monopoly yeah. in six plus businesses for the last 10, yeah. 20 years. They are actually seeing some competition. Good for them for focusing, yeah. creating efficiencies as everyone is doing now, and giving them the best chance to compete against OpenAI and all the other AI platforms out there. It is kind of weird, though, because remember when 20% time was very big? I mean, you got Gmail out of 20% yeah. time. You got, you, got some, you got some pretty good products out of 20% time, and then they took that away, right? Yep, it, and, and, and that, to me, was literally the antithesis of what Google was. Yeah. Google was about yeah. creating new things. And the way to do that was to inspire your people to go do it, right? And, and you know the kinds of tools and, and, and resources that you have in your 20% time yep. to be able to do that. And they've literally taken away. So Google has, been, has gone from a company of innovation to a company that feels like just an old, stodgy yeah. shell of itself, unfortunately. I mean, it's a money-making machine. Don't get me fucking wrong. But if you want to be, I mean, one of the reasons why they got outleaped or outjumped or outpaced by OpenAI Leapfrogged. is because they did not innovate. They were afraid to actually put the shit out there, and yeah. OpenAI could not, I mean, there was nothing for them to lose. So anyway, yeah. I... I, I I see kind of like the worm turning on them. Not that they're going to die anytime soon because Google is going to be around forever. No, not at all. But, not at all. but they used to be the innovation leader. Yeah, and you got to think why, you know, the, the environment or the culture of taking risks will support yeah. these sort of creative ideas are, are now passe. It's part of the culture. And I guess at the it's point. just when companies yeah. get so big, they can't do that. It's also easier to start a company now. Yeah. Uh, 20 years ago, starting a company was pretty hard. You yeah. had to have servers and yeah. build a website that cost you 100 grand. Like <laughs> Google Server can't farm. just say now we have resources for you that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah. It's a lot easier for people to start companies, which is overall good for the ecosystem, but harder for Google to remain competitive on a on an innovation yeah. basis. And speaking of innovation, Chad, let's get to Unleash. We are Whew. here at the Unleash Conference live from the Daxtra booth. Good times. What are some takeaways? What are some highlights from you so far? What are you seeing? Well, I have to say that the uh, first and foremost, we, we, we've got we've to talk about the elephant in the room, and that was a, the 830-foot fucking fall slash yep. jump that we took. Um, i got to say, they, we had, a, I think, 11 people jump. Everybody did it. Yep. Some there were different levels of anxiety and fear from uh, one to the next, right? Yep. Right? And you you expect that, but I got to say man, guys like Serge, that dude was scared. And he got up there 88 80, and he fucking nailed it, yep. right? I mean, so th to me, it was great to see guys like guys like that. I mean, even Matt. <laughs> it's funny the the CEO of Outhire. Uh -huh. We the three of us go up, right? And the guy in the elevator asks, he's like um, who wants to go first? I'm like, nah, I'll go for it. Matt's like, no, I'm going first, right? He's like, I'm gonna get this shit <laughs> get over, over with. with. Yeah. And then at the end, dude, he there was so much adrenaline you could mm -hmm. see in him. I mean, it was it was a blast. It was just it it was it was a bonding event. You know, yeah. it was really cool. Yeah, we all went through something that no one else has gone through. We'll have that bond, <laughs> that bond forever, Together. forever. Yeah, yeah and I, some I, fosters I, after. I it. quote Tom Petty: "The waiting uh, is the hardest part. Yes. Um, the anticipation, going up the elevator." The people that are there looking at you going to jumps, oh, yeah. looking at you like you're a nutball. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen the video, the highlights, oh, go out to all of our socials, YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel, like all the highlights are there. I have a, a new pair of meta glasses, so I actually recorded Those were awesome. the jump from my point of view. Those were awesome. Uh, which was very cool. So yeah. it's, uh, it's a great highlight video. Um, I would do it again, dare say, if yeah. another out higher or sponsor. Lau, you to <laughs> I think so. Okay. Um, okay. I think getting through it once put her mind at ease. Good. And, yeah. Uh, I could probably do it again. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. But I, I'm I'm less fearful now of doing it now that I've done it. Yeah. Well, sure. and we both wore our brown pants, just yes, like we did. Uh, just like Deadpool tells you to. Uh -huh. So that was that was doubled smart. up on the depends yes. for me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we we also went to the ice party. Uh, you know, Omar's ice castle was cold as fuck. It we was stayed cold. we stayed two two hours. Uh, he owes me a pinky toe. 
Um, <laughs> Were you wearing the Birkenstocks? I was Were you feeling a little chilly? Yeah, I yeah. was not. But that was that was the entire thing was was made of uh, was made of ice. And then last night, you know, neon neon nights. Uh, too many drinks and gummies last night. But thanks to Plum, I mean that was a blast. And if you haven't seen the videos, go to YouTube or TikTok or or LinkedIn or what yep. have you. That that was gorgeous, man. When it got dark out. Yep. It's a great event. Uh, if you're looking for a unique event in Vegas to do, uh, yeah. that's one of them. Uh, personally, for me, the um, the, the record playing uh, tostadas yeah. as the appetizer was, was my favorite. Said. That uh, was awesome. If you, if you don't know what a uh, tostada is, it's like a hardened uh, tortilla shell. Yeah. Yep. It doesn't fold like a taco. Uh -huh. They put these things on a record player, had them spin around, and they put the toppings on yeah. as it's spinning around. Yeah. So it looks really nice and pretty. Uh, that, was cool. that was That was really clever. It was very as cool. As well as the... Um, there was a DJ down from the, uh, too. I don't know, was it an escalator or kind of a, oh, a walking? Oh, yeah. yeah, with, yeah. Uh, like yeah. You have the sushi that goes around that you pick. They yeah. had... You know, I chicken and waffles just, and yeah, just sort of unique rotating food around. that was going around. Yeah, big ups to the Plum team. <laughs> uh, Job Pixel was great. The uh, the ice cups, the ice that, glasses yeah, for your because I, I didn't have to great. ask for a big rock. Yeah, because it was in a big it rock. It was in a big rock it for was sure. Freaking awesome. That was great and yeah. uh, great people as well uh, helped support oh, that party, dude, yeah. uh, which was great. Then we did the collab work uh, in and out burger after, which is. It seems to be almost like a staple now. Summer Delaney has made In-N-Out Burger like a staple of almost like a Chad and Cheese party. And Chad, I'm here for it. I'm here <laughs> for In-N-Out Burgers. Trust me. I will I will never miss an opportunity for free In-N-Out Burgers. So let's talk about the show. Let's say we, the parties have been amazing. Let's talk about you. What's been your favorite part about the show? Favorite part is always the people. Yeah. Uh, whether it's reconnecting with Old friends haven't seen in a while, and there's there's yeah. been a few people that I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, uh, yeah. at this conference, obviously meeting new friends. I always love the startup alley yeah. kiosk area. I love they put it all back in one place yep. because they they broke it up before. Yep. I when I want to get in startup mode, I want to be in one place and I want to hit them all up, right? Yep. And and it makes it so much easier. Yep. So uh, uh, there's been some interesting startups, some some that we know pretty well yeah. uh, that have all commented favorably. <laughs> Uh, for that, but overall, it's it's, it's the people, and oh, you know, yeah. he, you know, I don't get to go to many sessions anymore. We yeah. get stopped and talked to, and which is <laughs> which is the whole reason why we do this. It's awesome, but it's uh, the people has been a, a standout for me, as well as uh, a couple of takeaways for me. One is okay. it, it feels it feels optimistic, but conservatively so, yeah. cautiously optimistic, which means a lot for HR, right? Yeah, right. But even the vendors, they're you know, even the parties have been a little bit. I wouldn't say downgraded, but yeah, yeah. bare naked ladies aren't playing at uh, <laughs> at the Palms, you know. If you if uh, if you remember parties parties past. So overall, cautiously optimistic uh, opinion. I do feel like, however, the startups, a lot of energy over there, yeah. a lot of excitement, a lot of in interesting products that I'm sure we'll be talking about uh, in the months and years to come. And my my final takeaway. Uh, employ, yeah, aka job bite, aka the Jazz roll up HR, K1. aka lever, <laughs> whoever else. Uh, Krispy Kreme donuts at the booth is genius. It is, is genius. It is genius. Now if they can just figure genius. out a way to have the hot, the hot sign, Krispy Kreme. If they had the, the hot sign, sign yeah, uh, that's a winning marketing strategy, that is, my friend. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is a winning marketing. I don't. Strategy. I don't even think you had lunch yesterday because you're eating Krispy Kreme. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so, so good. So. Um, I, for listeners, uh, Kennedy, uh, my stepdaughter, actually runs the investor and startup programs here for Unleash. And uh, so I'm a little biased, but I love the startup competition was great yesterday. I think we, you and I both picked the winner fairly easily. Man Imagine that. Manifest uh, won the startup competition. That's usemanifest.com. Um, what they did, they're a cloud-based platform which digitizes uh, retirement transfers mm -hmm. to, maxi to maximize re uh, retirement outcomes, which is great. Yep. The thing is, if you've ever left a company and you want and you want to move your shit, it takes for it. It sucks. Yep. It's not fun, right? And this digitizes it all, makes it easy. I thought that was really cool. Um, then, uh, over, like I said, over in Startup Alley. Here was one thing that it, it almost felt like I was doing office hours for about two hours the other day because yep. I was going in and going through the pitches with them. And I'm like, no, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. And, and, this, and the founders who were there listened intently and sure. took notes, right? I'm like, this is just advice, right? But, I mean, 
it's still it's still somewhat problematic that we have a lot of new startups coming in who don't understand what the real problems are and don't understand the real pain points yeah. for organizations. They're focused on what they think yeah. is the problem. And in most cases, it might be a problem, but it's not a big enough problem for a company to spend money. Yep. I think your quote to me in watching the winning presentation was, this is boring as fuck, but it's a really cool business idea. Be a really cool <laughs> yeah. company, and yeah. uh, I yeah. agreed with you. 401ks aren't going to get anyone out of bed, but no. it is a big issue for people a lot of cash. Uh, to manage those for sure. Chad, are you a little warm in what you're wearing? I know that the people oh, yes. watching on YouTube uh, probably noticed something interesting. Uh, oh, Chad yeah. and I are donning Montreal Canadiens jerseys. Uh, yes. We mentioned last week in shout-outs that our friends at Hiring Branch yep. – Based in Montreal, uh, got us some jerseys. Ooh, so do, you're, do, do, you're, do, do, do. you're rocking the white. Yep. Uh, Chad on the back. Uh -huh. I'm rocking the red uh, with cheese on the back. Very nice. We may have to go hold hands, uh, walk down, <laughs> walk down, uh, walk down the expo halls together, and make people, you know, make up shit about us. But thanks to Hiring Branch. These are some legit jerseys. These are these, these aren't the these, iron on. No, you know. if you're watching on YouTube, you can yeah. see these are like four hundred dollar jerseys. Yeah, no shit. And I'm not talking about four hundred dollar Canadian either. I'm talking about four hundred dollar US US currency. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these are not these are not bullshit, kids. Yeah. Yeah. Hiring branches in a kiosk. They were yeah. gonna do a twenty by twenty, but they said the Chad and Cheese jerseys cost so much. We gotta <laughs> we gotta keep it at the kiosk level. If you're if you're if you're uh, interested in their services, uh, fuck interviews. I think is their yes, motto. Fuck interviews. Uh, go check out hiringbranch. I love it. Dot com. I don't know if they have a dot ca or not. Uh, no. I haven't checked that. I out. I hope not. <laughs> Anything else from Unleash that were takeaways? Yeah, no. I mean, I, one of the things, again, that I love about Unleash is that the stages in the expo hall, there's a lot of content that's happening. So yep. that draws, you know, the HR practitioners or the TA practitioners, HR practitioners back here. And that's what vendors want. Yep. They want interaction. They want, you know, they want at least some type of FaceTime. So, again, Unleash, if you're listening, continue to do this, do more of it. I think from, from an ecosystem standpoint, it feels more complete. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Vendors love it. Vendors yeah. love the engagement, the energy. Uh, I had said at Transform that I felt Transform was becoming a little bit more competitive uh -huh. to Unleash than an HR tech. Uh -huh. And I, I think I agree with that now that I've been at Unleash. Yeah. There seems to be Transform Unleash, a lot of similarities how do they break out from that? And HR tech continues to be kind of its own yeah. dinosaur or whale oh, yeah. or whatever you want to call them. It's, they're both big. So both big. <laughs> yeah. Both big. Both big. All right. If Thanks there's a nothing lot. else, Unleash. Thanks let's a lot take for a quick break, us. get a coffee, and we'll come back and talk about Upwork. Yes. LinkUp is the leading provider of deep, accurate, and actionable labor market data. Unique in that we only get job listings from the one source of truth the employer's website. By going to the source, we avoid all the duplicate and expired job listings that plague job boards and thereby other job data sets. Our data offers the clearest window to employers of all types and sizes throughout the world for an ever-growing number of use cases and applications. All right, Chad, a little news from our friends at Upwork who yes. are actually here at the conference. Yeah, they're right it's pretty there. pretty rare that... They're uh, right there. Yep, they are right there. <laughs> uh, it's nice neon sign. Did you get that from the same company? This as, is uh, how Dichers? we work now. I don't know. This I have no clue. It but looks yeah, good, though. I like it. LinkedIn's not here. Uh, yeah. A lot of the big companies, they don't, they don't take Indeed's the time. Here. So Indeed's here. Indeed is here. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think they have a 10 by 10 or yeah, something. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, pretty it's modest. It's not big, but it's a yeah. modest booth. But they Atlas, are here. Atlas they has a big, here. the EOR groups. Anyway, well, the, uh, the the quarterly reports are coming in from companies. Okay. Uh, I actually believe ZipRecruiters is today uh, after, we re after we record. So expect that to be a topic next is, week. Is that what the, the loud sucking sound was that I heard that earlier was, this yeah, morning? Yeah, out of California, <laughs> out of Santa Monica. <laughs> But Upwork had a very nice uh, quarterly earnings report. The yep. San Francisco-based freelance platform uh, surged by 18.7% to $190.9 million this quarter, driven by flat fee pricing adoption. Uh, gross margin improved with net income up by 7.4%. Yeah. Active clients rose by 5% to 872000 uh, The company introduced UMA AI, boosting client spending by 7%. Yeah. 
Uh, revenue guidance for Q2 is set between 190 and 195 million dollars. Stock rose nearly 5% on the news, killing it. Your thoughts on Upwork? This is product. This is all product driven, right? Upwork, somebody came into Upwork, and we need to dig into this. Somebody came into Upwork and they started to assess the products that they had available and they said, we can do better from a product standpoint. These aren't gaining the traction in the market that they should. So they started to, they started to, 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 to move and yep. to change things. And uh, that's, I mean, that's what we're seeing here. Upwork says it's AI and machine learning category, gross sales volume uh, has grown 50% year over year, making it once again the company's fastest growing category and revenue ads and monetization products jumped by 93%. Yep year over year, right? So, and that makes it Upwork's um, what, the biggest stream, yep. right? So it's, it to me, this is, if you're a company and you're afraid to evolve and adapt, uh, you're gonna die. I mean, we've seen it. Uh, these guys are adapting. Yeah. This is proof that they're adapting, they're evolving. They see that this AI and machine learning piece, I mean, even putting UMA in there to make it easier for recruiters, uh, for uh, job seekers, everybody is just, they're, they are trying to meet the market where it is, yeah. right? And, the, and I believe they're trying to skate to where the puck's going to be. Mm -hmm. We shall see, but these are great numbers, and I'm glad to see um, that uh, Upwork is, is really embracing uh, change. Yeah. You know, you and I have talked about Upwork as a, a mega trend, yeah. right? People contracting, yep. why well, hire these folks? It's a lot cheaper. I have a, a global uh, global. Uh, universe to choose from yeah. uh, in, in candidates. I became a little bearish on Upwork oh, when, yeah. when ChatGPT came out yeah. and when these AI tools came out. You don't need a copywriter if you can just plug something into to ChatGPT. So I thought that would really affect the knowledge worker, uh -huh. which is what Upwork is. It's yes. knowledge workers. Yeah. Instead, AI is is taking the business to a, a whole yeah. nother level. Yeah. Um, increasing set like 7% uh, profits on spending by clients yeah. is huge. I don't know how they're doing that, um, but that's pretty awesome. Uh, they're getting more companies use the service more as sticky. opposed to less. Yeah, sticky too. So I'm a little bit uh, gobsmacked, as the British might say, as to what is going on in Upwork. Yeah. They turn this AI threat on its head, yes. and they are benefiting from it. Yeah. My guess is the, the best... Uh, workers on the platform are becoming super developers and super marketers because those people have learned AI and how to get the most productivity. Yeah. They're probably flipping more jobs. Those people are more expensive than like say a low level yes. uh, Ukrainian 20 year old just getting into the business. So it feels like the best workers at Upwork are getting more jobs, they're completing tasks quicker, and thus charging more and getting more money into, into the system. So I'm super impressed. Yeah. We always thought this was a mega trend. AI is taking it to a whole whole different place, yeah. and uh, it's exciting to watch for sure. So it's, it's interesting because we were just at Paradox in, in Scottsdale a couple of weeks ago, and their focus was obviously the, the conversational ATS, the conversational yep. AI, um, just all the way around. Upwork, I mean, they're they're leaning heavily into that with this new large language model, this UMA model, yep. uh, with conversational AI and matching, right? So I really believe, like you'd said, this could have really stuck struck a death blow to Upwork, but they're like, no, we're going to innovate with yeah. this. We're going to move faster. And if we move faster and smarter, we can get more people into jobs faster. If we get more people into jobs faster, then yep. companies are going to fucking love us even more. And more pe people are going to come and more people are going to continue to use. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, product, though, man, I mean, again, they, they're innovating and they're changing product. And I think that, to me, is is the key to understand how you get to, again, hyper growth again, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. 
And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. Uh, it turns out that... Um Oh, never mind. I lost my okay. kind of thought. Let's take a quick break. I need another cup of coffee, obviously. And we'll talk about, good Lord, naked cruises. What's up, everybody? We are live from the Daxter booth at the Unleash Conference in Las Vegas. Well, we're not talking about naked Ted Cruz, are we? Not Ted Cruz. Okay. No, okay. actual you said, boats. You said naked yeah, cruises, boats, and I was like, boats. holy shit, I don't, I don't need that. All right. It's, it's now dubbed the Big Nude Boat cruise departing from florida imagine that uh starting next year they offer passengers a clothing optional experience including at the buffet that's right <laughs> naked buffets as well the 11-day trip on the norwegian pearl includes stops at private islands and caribbean destinations prices range from 2000 for an inside cabin to over 33 grand for a top room guests are advised to use towels in common areas and pack a swimsuit for non-clothing optional excursions. Chad, this has Euro Chad written all over it, if you ask me. What are your thoughts? You would be wrong. I have, I've already opted out of uh, the fully closed ver clothed versions of, of cruises, especially since COVID turned uh, ships into floating coffins. Uh -huh. uh, so imagining a bunch of nude, sweaty, fat dudes at a uh, buffet. Yeah, I, that's Why a. Why they got to be fat? That's dudes? a giant. Why do you look no. at me and say fat? Dudes I didn't. On that I was. I, was I looking at you? I'm My bad. Triggered. That was. That was. That was, that, that was bad. Anyway, not that even adds to the floating petri dish kind of idea. Fat uh -huh, and sweaty. Yeah. And not to mention, can you imagine? We talk about talent. Can you imagine trying to get somebody Recruiting to for this? Yes, to try to get <laughs> some young kids yeah. to come <laughs> clean up after your sweaty ass was just. I mean. I, dude, I got nothing. I Recruiting just, for this has <laughs> got to be a trip. This is a reality show uh, in the making. Recruiting for naked cruises. They don't show up. You know, they, they just show up one day, and you're like, I'm on what cruise? Which one? <laughs> Excuse me? You're, you're, yeah. you're on the nude boat. Yeah. The buffet is interesting. They should sell it as a diet cruise. Oh, God. Because yeah. watching naked people at the buffet is going to turn you off food uh, for the entire week, uh, unless, for sure. Unless that's your kink. By the way, Chad, I didn't, uh, <laughs> don't know if you know this. July 4th. Oh, July 14th yeah. is National Nude Day. So if you and Julie in the privacy of your own home, you don't want to <laughs> privacy get nuts I mean, on July 14th. It's it's already, coming soon. We already do that. I mean, in our in our own home. Uh, but we will be in in July. We'll be in Europe and they've got uh, nude and topless beaches all over the place. So we might just actually do. I will go. I will go topless. I promise they do. Chad, did you hear about <laughs> the flasher who's thinking about retiring? Oh, no. He decided to stick it out. For one more year. <laughs> Live from the Daxter booth at Unleash, Chad and Cheese. We, we out. out. Thank you for listening to what's it called? A podcast. The Chad. The Cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout outs of people you don't even know. And yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!